Thank you, Dorothy. Welcome, everyone, uh, to Cleveland Park Congregational United Church of Christ. We are an open and affirming congregation dedicated to racial justice. And that means whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you're welcome here. Uh, Lisa, who usually fills this space, is absent this morning because her kitty is ill. So uh, she's home taking care of her cat. Uh, a couple quick announcements. This morning for coffee hour, we're gonna have a conversation with our very own William Tweedley. Uh, and that's uh, on the subject of, are you feeling anxious about the current election season? <laughs> Sorry. And the answer is yes. <laughs> um, the Aging Gracefully and Gratefully uh, group will meet this Tuesday at uh, at 4.30, every, from 3 to 4.30, excuse me, everyone's welcome. Uh, the book discussion group will uh, meet also on um, the 4th uh, with, um, let's see, there's a book discussion and author visit. So join Washington Post writer Robert Samuels and Washington Post assignment editor Dan Steinberg at seven for a discussion about the Pulitzer Prize winning book, His Name is George Floyd. <clears throat> uh, there'll be a June retreat with uh, Pastor Ellen. Uh, she'll give you more information on that called the Amen Effect and that will be on June the 8th. And on June 9th, we have the postcarding potluck. That's a group to get together and address postcards uh, uh, concerning the election coming up in the fall. So with that, I will turn it over to Pastor Ellen. Thank you, Bruce. Good morning and happy June. I can't quite believe that it's June. So I'd like to follow up two announcements. Um, first, the June retreat has been rescheduled for its original, original date of June 22nd. So if you would like to join us for the meditation retreat, um, we do a lot more than meditate. Um, we connect with one another. We'll be focusing on a really delightful book called The Amen Effect. If you would like to join us, please let me know. And again, that is June 22nd. It will be correct in all upcoming announcements. Second, I really encourage you to attend today's coffee hour conversation with Chaplain William Tweedley. Hello, William, up in the balcony with Dan. Some of you may remember the fabulous workshop he led for us a number of years ago on how best to support one another in community. And this morning, he's going to expand this theme to focus on how we take care of ourselves so we are able to support others. In a world that's so far beyond our control, we can still keep calm to carry on. I also want to thank each of you who participated in yesterday's truly inspiring UCC celebration at People's Congregational Church. There were folks from congregations all around the DC region and it was a joyful event. I think we need more gatherings like this to remind ourselves of all the people working with love for justice in our city and world. Together we can be a voice for positive and peaceful change. This morning, our service will focus on that strange commandment of keeping the Sabbath holy. What does this mean in our work-obsessed culture and how does it align with what God calls us to do? We'll begin as always by lighting our candles of hope and healing for the world. May this light illumine all places, beings, and situations without exception, near and far.
Please join me for the call to worship. Oh God, sometimes we're tired. There's so much work to be done. You tell us to take Sabbath rest. You call us to create your kingdom on earth. We can't do it all, God. So where do we begin? And together we pray, loving and compassionate one, you may have noticed there's a lot going on in the world. We can't keep track of all the wars and mudslides and tornadoes and gun violence. We need a break, but how can we turn away? We want to help, but don't know what to do. The truth is, we're tired and have a lot going on in our own lives too. Oh God, help us to keep our hearts open and remind us of your command to rest. We don't have to choose between caring for others and taking care of ourselves. Honoring Sabbath gives us the space we need to discern what we're called to do. Amen. I invite you to rise in body and or spirit as you are able for our opening hymn found on the insert in your order of service. The way that the hymn goes is all of the left column followed by all of the right column.
I now invite you to join in a time of silent reflection. When we gather for worship, we heed God's call and honor our need for Sabbath and rest. When we enter into silence, we attune our hearts and open our minds to a presence greater than our own. As we begin this short period of meditation, I encourage you to bring your full self to this present moment. Set aside any distractions, lay down your burdens, and take a deep, life-giving breath. God is with us. Let us reflect upon the week that has passed. What are the joys we have celebrated? And what and what concerns have we endured? Are there things we have done that we ought not to have done? And are there things we have left undone that we ought to have done. As we look forward to the week ahead, what help will we need from God or neighbor? And what can we do to nurture love of God and love of neighbor in the world? We'll close in prayer. Source of life. For the joys we have celebrated, we give you thanks. God of compassion, for the concerns we have endured, please tend our hearts. Spirit of justice, for those things we have misdone, transform us with your love. Companion God, as we look forward to the week ahead, be ever present with us. And great lover of all, as we seek to nurture love of God and neighbor in the world, guide our actions and our prayers. Amen.
In Matthew's Gospel, Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. This sounds a lot like Sabbath. And I wonder if what he meant is, if we will come to him, if we will listen to the commandments, one of which is to honor the Sabbath, if we will receive the gift of rest, if we are willing to actually let go of the heaviness we're carrying, which sometimes our ego doesn't allow us to do, if we are able to set the burden down and accept a little grace and have a little faith that maybe we don't know exactly what the right answer is, then we will have the space, the energy, and the heart open wide enough to hear what it is that is ours to do. Just remember, even if we don't, it's okay. We are still loved, wholly and completely, no matter what we do or don't do. And that, I believe, in and of itself, gives us the space, the rest, in order to move forward. Let us pray together the prayer of Jesus. God of Shabbat and Shalom, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So much, Don and Lee. That's beautiful. I now invite all those online to unmute and those in the sanctuary to turn and share the peace and love of God with your neighbor in the pew. May peace be with you. Peace. <laughs>
I can do it. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi, Elle. How are you? I couldn't unmute and I couldn't un stop the disc. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Good to see you all. Hi, Elle. Hi, Dad. Are they not so great every Sunday? Every Sunday, they come to our church on Zoom, and then they go to their church. Yay. All the rest of you online are great as well. All right. So um, everybody online, go ahead and remute, please. And I'm going to invite um, any children and youth who would like to come forward. Marion, if you want to come up as well. And anybody else, of course is welcome to come forward. This is a great opportunity to take a stretch break, you know, if you want to come up. So I have a question. I have not had, let's see, are we 10, 11, and 12? How old are you, Noah? Are you 12? 12 and 13. And Magda, you just turned 12, right? Or 11? 11, okay, so 13, 11, and 10? Nine, okay, nine, 11, 13. That was pretty close. Oh, there we go. <laughs> All right, that was easy. 9, 11, 13. How about you, Marion? How old are you? 25. 25? Okay. All right. So, so it's been a while since I had a 9, 11, and 13 year old. All right, so I have to ask you a question because technology changes, right? Okay. So, when my boys were like, well, way back in the day when Nicholas, who's now 29, was playing computer games. Okay, we used to do them on the computer, not like with Xbox and you know, whatever. And they had like a disc. Are there still, are there still some? Are there still, actually, a lot of people still Okay, because it's like retro. Right. Or just no, because. No, actually, actually, um, computers are usually. Oh, yeah, Mike. Yeah, right. There we go. You, computers are usually like a lot better than consoles. Oh, okay. Be, because. Like, like, but they're way more expensive. Okay. All right. That's helpful to know. All right. Well, so I have a question for you. I do actually know how much the computer versus the console costs because I am often the one purchasing them. So, um, so way back in the day when you were playing a game, you, and don't, don't get me wrong, my boys are still playing video games. It's just that I'm not in the same room with them, thankfully. Um, and so they, we used to talk about like, okay, it's time for dinner. You have to press pause. Does anybody still say press pause? No. Sometimes, well, there are some games that you can't pause because they're oh, like be, those there, are the some evil games, games. games. Yeah, right? Yeah. Those are the ones that parents hate because kids are like, I'm yeah. gonna lose all my yeah. right. And oh yeah, and and then and then they're multiplayer. And that's oh, why. right. And then you're letting down your teammates and you're like, mom and dad, I can't let down my friends, right? Yeah. My team, yeah. I know, I hate those games. All right, I mean, I'm glad you like them, but <laughs> from a parent perspective. Okay, so, but you know what I mean by pressing pause, right? You know what I mean by pressing pause? Like, okay, so say you're watching um, something on your laptop, whether it's YouTube or Netflix or something, you can actually press a button that pauses it. Okay, so everybody knows what I mean by press pause, okay. So I want to talk a little bit today about how we can press pause anytime we want in our lives. All right, can you think of a moment? Think about your day yesterday, Saturday, okay, whatever you were doing, think about it. Okay, was there a moment yesterday in your life where you kind of wish you could have just pressed pause and just like taken a break and started fresh? Because it's Saturday, right? There's no moment that you that you didn't like yesterday. Is that right? Okay, that's good. Okay, Do, would you mind sharing it with us? Uh, taekwondo. Oh, what happened? Did something happen that was just sort of like you wished you could have like taken a little break and reset and come back to it, or? It's just a little frustrating. Yeah. Okay, but I think that's a great example. So. So in my life, there are often times when maybe I am in the middle of a conversation with somebody and maybe it's not going so well. Okay, like maybe you're talking to your parent or a friend or even a teacher 
and it's not going so well. And you might even start, like you're starting to feel a little angry, or maybe you're starting to feel a little frustrated, or maybe you're starting to feel a little afraid, who knows? You're just starting to like, you're gearing up, right? Okay. Did you know that you can press pause in those moments? You can, you can, you can just like sudden, you can be like, oh, I am going to take a pause here. I'm going to take a pause. I'm going to take a breath. You can even tell the other person, you know what? I just need to, I, I need a pause. I just, I need a pause for a minute. Do any of you ever do that? And even if you don't, do you, do you know times when that would be really useful? You can't think of any times, Aurora, that that would be useful? It's okay if you can't. You don't want to use it. Okay. All right. You don't. Yes. That it is a choice. That's actually a really good point. It's a choice, right? What's that, Emily? It is. It's it, well. It's a timeout we choose. It's not a timeout somebody else gives us. That's what's so cool about it, is that we say to ourselves, you know what? I'm getting ramped up here. This might not go very well. Just gonna take a pause and calm down. There's sometimes when that when you can't really do that right when you're just like so ramped up that it's hard to no what okay tell me tell me your just times t just like where you are kind of determines if you can do that or not like at taekwondo at taekwondo it, it might have been hard to convince the teachers to let me actually like walk out and uh i see and yeah take, and take a break got it Yep. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you actually have to set it up with people ahead of times. If you know that you're going to be in a situation that might be a little frustrating, sometimes you have to have that conversation ahead of time and sort of say, Hey, I might need to take a pause. Maybe you can even have like a little signal. Like Harold and I, Harold and I have this signal before the beginning of the service when it's time for him to play the prelude. I go like that. Now you can watch for it. What were you going to say, Magda? Well, I was just saying, like, I agree with Noah. Like, sometimes, like, if you're talking to your teacher, it's kind of hard to do that, especially if they're like, you need, <laughs> I need to talk to you right now. Especially if your teacher's strict. Like, yeah. you can't just say, like, I just, no. Well, you know, I hear you. And especially in the middle of class. Yeah. Right, that's true. Like, if they're asking. Like, in front answer, of the entire class. That's true. Yeah, so again, that might be a time when you want to talk to your teacher alone and just say, you know, sometimes I need a pause. Yeah, Aurora. But also, like, the best time that you can do it is at recess. But then you would always waste your playtime. Well, recess is kind of a built-in pause, right? Like, that's, that's actually a pause for your day at school. Is that sort of, yeah? All right, well... Let's just start. Oh, you don't get recess because you're in middle school. Oh, right. When you go to middle school, you no longer get recess. Okay. Okay. Well, let's just say a little prayer. And this is something, this isn't something that you just suddenly know how to do. This is actually something that you practice because a lot of us grown ups are not so great at it. And it's really important to learn how to just take a pause, take a breath, reset and then go forward in a little bit more peaceful way. Okay, it's not easy, but we can practice it. So do you wanna say a little prayer with me about it? Okay. Oh, God of the pause, help us when we are feeling all our feelings or any of our feelings and it's feeling a little bit hard, help us to remember that we can breathe we can take a little break, even if it's just for a few seconds, we can go inside and you will be right there with us, giving us a little peace and helping us to move forward in a way that we choose to do. Amen. All right, enjoy. Did um, Marianne tell you that like the Legos and Jumanji and all the cool stuff that you guys wanted from Amazon came? Like what? He'll show you. <laughs>
Confession, yes, I ordered them from Amazon, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, Melissa will now read from the book of Deuteronomy and the Gospel of Mark. You like hiding behind okay. I'm just short enough. I can hide behind the laptop. <laughs> Good morning. Um, as Ellen said, the first reading this morning is from Deuteronomy, chapter 5, verses 12 through 14. Observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy, as the Holy One commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is Sabbath, to the divine, you shall not be, do any work. You, or your son or your daughter, or your male or female servant, or your ox or your donkey, or any of your livestock, or the resident alien in your towns, so that your male and female servant may rest as well as you. The second reading is from the Gospel of Mark chapters two, verses 23 onward and chapter 3 verse 5. One Sabbath he was going through the grain fields and as they made their way his disciples began to pluck heads of garlic. The Pharisee said to him, look why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food, how he entered the house of God when Abiatar was high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which it is not lawful for any but the priests to eat? And he gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, the Sabbath, Sabbath was made for humankind and not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord, over, Lord even of the Sabbath. Again, he entered the synagogue and a man was there who had a withered hand. They were watching him to see, whether, to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, come forward. Then he said to them, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. He looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart and said to, to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was restored. Thank you, Melissa. How many of you would like to press pause on life about now? Not everyone, but many of you. Last fall when I talked about 2024 with some of our lay leaders, we realized this could be a stressful year. The wars in Gaza and Ukraine, our own divided country, the upcoming election that could break us further apart, signs of climate crisis all over the world, and the fact that we are still recovering from a bizarre period we almost never talk about, two years of worldwide pandemic. And this list doesn't include the more personal loads we're each carrying, illness, death, addictions, caregiving, job loss and job stress, mental health issues, divorce, and the many small and large transitions of life, such as moving from a long-time home 
to a retirement dwelling. Some of us are tired. I say this not to be gloomy or pessimistic, but rather to acknowledge that many of us are under stress and I'm seeing signs that we're starting to unravel a bit at the edges, which means it's probably a good Sunday to talk about Sabbath or in Hebrew, Shabbat. Honor the Sabbath and keep it holy is one of the 10 commandments or top 10 of the 613 mitzvot or commandments included in the Torah or first five books of the Hebrew Bible. It's right up there with don't kill and respect God as God. This particular commandment is based on the first creation story in Genesis when God worked for six days creating the world and rested on the seventh. Mind you, in Jewish practice, the commandment isn't just to rest, it's to enjoy. In other words, we're commanded both to take a break from all our regular work, even household tasks such as cooking, cleaning, and shopping, and to enjoy this incredible world. Both and. However, as always, we're meant not just to care for ourselves, but for others. So the commandment isn't just about us. It's about those who labor so we can lead the lives we live. Everyone is meant to get a Sabbath. We're all, even non-human beings, meant to get a rest from the daily labor burdens and stressors of our lives. This is a commandment of compassion and of justice. But if it's so important, so compassionate and just, then why did Jesus feel the need to flaunt it in the eyes of the Jewish leaders, remembering as always that Jesus was Jewish himself? Was he demonstrating pikuach nefesh, a Hebrew phrase that means to save a life or soul, and that allows saving a life to take precedence over most other Jewish laws, including observance of Shabbat? Though he wasn't really saving a life by allowing his disciples to snack on the heads of grain or even by healing the hand of a withered man, the withered hand of a man. So what was he doing? I don't know. But I agree with Reverend Nanette Sawyer, who thinks that in this passage, Jesus seems to be expanding the concept of saving, not saving a life to the larger categories of doing good or doing harm which she notes is something Jewish rabbis and scholars have done throughout history, wrestling with how to live a balanced, healthy life that also affirms and actively supports the inherent worth and dignity of all other life. Both and. Now this is a perennial challenge, obviously, but I think we are facing it in spades as we near the midpoint of 2024. How do we live a balanced, healthy life that also affirms and actively supports the inherent worth and dignity of all other life? Returning to the Hebrew Bible, which was, of course, the scripture of Jesus, two words keep coming to mind, Shabbat and Shalom. I preached about God's shalom in a sermon last month, explaining that it refers to a reality of maximal well-being for people and the earth, a place of wholeness, healing, abundance, just distribution, and reconciliation. God's shalom is a world in which captives are released, the blind can see, the marginalized are prioritized, and the oppressed are freed. In fact, in Leviticus, God commands that every 50 years a jubilee, or year of the Lord's favor, be proclaimed. A time when all debts are canceled, captives returned, right relationship restored, and humans, animals, and land given a rest. God's shalom is the beloved community. One might even say the ultimate Shabbat. But how? I mean, if Sabbath is supposed to be a time of complete rest, 
How could God's shalom, which is about actively creating a just and compassionate world, be the ultimate Sabbath? Because my friends, when we live in a space of both compassion and justice, Shabbat and shalom, taking care and taking action, we're in balance. All is in balance. We're able to do that which we're called to do, our part, which always includes rest, because God knows we need it. God knows we need it. If we're living out our call to help create the beloved community, meaning we're not doing things we're not called to do or answering someone else's call, we will live in peace, both inner peace and God's shalom. And this can be true no matter what is happening in the world or who is elected president of the United States. We can only answer the call meant for us. And every call, because it comes from God, includes rest. To paraphrase Reverend Sawyer, Jesus' acts in these verses don't strain him. They contribute to freedom and flourishing of life. The disciples are fed, and a man's hand, possibly his means to making a living, are restored. By these actions, Jesus teaches us that rest isn't the same as passivity. He acts for liberation and wholeness, not just for some, but for all. Friends, this is the same spirit and reasoning that underlies our Taking Action, Taking Care series. We want to highlight that we can, as individuals and as a congregation, take action to preserve and protect our democracy, among other things, while taking care of ourselves and one another. I encourage you to take a look at the flyer on our bulletin boards and doors to see how this series embraces both Shabbat and Shalom, often within one activity. For instance, as I said earlier, after worship, William Tweedley will lead us in a workshop and discussion on keeping calm to carry on. In it, we'll learn ways to keep ourselves centered regardless of the chaos around us, which in turn will give us energy to do what we're called to do. Next Sunday, after worship, we'll be hosting a postcarding potluck, a time when we can come together in fellowship, have a little fun, share a meal, feel free to bring a dish, but come even if you don't, and write postcards that encourage voters in low vote areas of the country to vote, by the way, it's a nonpartisan activity. As we move forward in 2024, I don't expect life is going to get less stressful. It's in the air we breathe or certainly in all the media we consume. And so I say to you, as I said to our lay leaders last week, this might be a good time for us to double down on loving kindness to be extra intentional about giving each other the benefit of the doubt and to offer ourselves and one another an additional helping of grace. All of which I will add here, connect with both Shabbat and Shalom. We have a lot going on in our church and as I already noted, the rest of our lives. So if you need to take a break, press pause, do so. I'm your pastor and I'm telling you, yes, we too, it's true, need multiple volunteers each week for our church to do what we do. And we're absolutely blessed with the people who step up to the plate to do it. But if it's not you and you simply can't, or if it is you and you need a break, that's okay too. We're a community, a body, 
if you will, and not every part of the body is able to do the same thing or even function at the same time. Sometimes we just need to be fed. Sometimes we just need to heal. Other times we're able to do the feeding we're able to help with the healing. So friends, let us continue to be a safe and loving space for one another. And as we're able to make this world a safe and loving space for all, compassion and justice, Shabbat and Shalom, they are not at odds. In truth, they can't be separated. Amen. Take just a moment of meditation. It is now the time in our service when we share our deep joys and concerns, silently or out loud with God and with one another. I'll share some of those we've already received, plus any posted in the chat room. I'll then invite those in the sanctuary to share. Please know that all ongoing prayer requests remain each week in our prayer email. God, hear our healing prayers for Susan Bombach, who's in rehab, recovering from a pulmonary embolism. Aaron's cousin's baby, who's had a heart transplant and is facing complications. Emily's friend and fellow advocate, Eva, who's being treated for cancer. Christina's uncle, Roberto, who's being treated for cancer and for her mother, an oncologist, who's the point person for so many family and friends. Jerry's friend, Joanne, who is seriously ill and in the hospital, and all who are dealing with long-term health concerns and diagnoses. God, hear our prayers for Dit and Susan as they move today from their longtime home to an apartment. The family and friends of Carolyn's niece, Tammy, who died this week. Harold's son, Cliff, who continues to await a kidney transplant. All those experiencing homelessness, especially as summer heats up. A ceasefire agreement between Hamas and Israel. Anyone anywhere who is sick or grieving or in need. anyone has a concern you would like to share, please raise your hand and Bruce will bring the microphone. Um, in the spirit of your um, sermon, I know that pausing doesn't always happen, excuse me, um, in relationship with others but I would like to pray for the person who is on the other side of a pause that you feel you have to take for yourself and for that person's, you know, like a, like a feedback loop, right? I wanna pray for that person's self-care and reaction and things in relation to um, the self-care you have to take for yourself. Absolutely, Don. thank you for sharing that other side of things. Other concerns? Serena.
I'm sorry, Bruce, to make you come up. <laughs> um, I'd like to uh, have prayers for my neighbor, Jerry, who is um, experience and, and experiencing an, an infection after a heart procedure, and for his wife, Nancy, who is undergoing the stress of caring for him. And did you say your friend, Jerry? Jerry. Jerry. Okay, friend Jerry. Yes, thank you. Other concerns? Move to Joyce. God, we give thanks for Nancy being back in our sanctuary after three months, I think, of what was supposed to be a very simple hip replacement surgery. We're so glad you're back. Um, for the Love for Love to the Fourth Power celebration, a UCC celebration yesterday at People's Congregational UCC, and for all those who devote their lives to creating peace, joy, and justice in this world. Other joys. Emily and then Nancy. Mine is a joy, mine is a joy slash concern. <laughs> um, tomorrow morning, Magda's almost all of her entire fifth grade class will be doing a class trip to Puerto Rico for the week, which I know is insane. They did a ton, a ton of fundraising so that no one, everyone can go. Um, so that's wonderful and exciting. I mean, I also feel so much pain in my heart for the situation for so many other children outside the world. But um, many of these kids haven't been away from home before. Magda's only been away from home with my mom. So um, just like a joy that they are able to get that experience and, um, you know, concerns that everyone's safe and not having too many, too much trouble. Absolutely. And for the chaperones and teachers. Yes, I, amen. <laughs> I would never want to be in that position. Uh, yes. Nancy? This is a reminder, we always use the microphone so that everyone online can hear. Hi, this is a joy for my husband, Howard, who uh, Friday, after many, many years in his office and a productive uh, career, uh, has retired. And it's a joy for uh, me to have him around more, and I hope for Howard to be home more, and we look forward to many adventures and good times together. Oh, Howard wants to reply to that. <laughs> I took a pause. Pa what'd you say? I took a pause. You took a pause. <laughs> Good. Congratulations. <laughs> Other joys. Yes, Ellen. It's a joy for me to um, remember the tradition of the flower communion. I grew up at the Cedar Lane Unitarian Church, and Harry and I brought our kids up at the Rockville Unitarian Church. And actually, the Sunday, the second Sunday in June, honors Reverend Norbert Capek, who was a Unitarian who died in Dachau during World War II. And in his memory, the Flower Communion is celebrated in the Unitarian Church, which does not celebrate communion. On that one Sunday, everyone in the congregation is invited to bring a flower. And before the service, everyone places the flower in the communal vase. And then at the conclusion of the service, everyone is invited to take a flower home. And my memory of the service, particularly when my kids were little, is that it was a joyous occasion but throughout the service, and the kids were there for the whole short service, there was such a tension riveted on the bouquet because usually there would be one or two really special flowers in that bouquet. And I remember the year when someone had brought an allium from their garden. And I don't know if you know what an allium looks like, but it looks like you know a Star Wars flower. And oh, the desire for that allium was intense. But, but really, what I want to remember is the joy of the um, bravery of individuals like Robert K. Peck. 
Amen. That is a beautiful ceremony. Thank you for sharing it with us. Other joys. Let us pray. Loving God, listen to the prayers of your people. Comfort and nourish us in both our joys and our concerns, spoken or unspoken, and hold us tenderly as we face the many different experiences that life and being human can bring. Holy and gracious Spirit, we are grateful for your presence as we move into this new week, a time that will bring forth its own sorrows and joys. Remind us to hold one another in love and prayer, reaching out as we are able to lend a hand, offer support, or share in celebration. We give thanks for the blessing of this congregation in our lives and pray that we might be a blessing to others in return. In your compassionate name, amen. I invite you to hold all of these joys and concerns in your heart as our choir shares a musical offering. Always open to new members. <laughs> I thought I might make it through the service without the allergies kicking in, but... This is the time in our service, in addition to my taking a quick allergy coughing break, when we receive the offering in grateful appreciation for the life and work of this beloved community. To support the ongoing work of our congregation, I invite you to give in person, via mail, or online as you are able. If you're in the sanctuary, 
You can contribute as the offering plate is passed or take out your phone and scan the QR code on the back of your worship bulletin. If you've already donated, I invite you to take one of the offering cards in the pew racks and put it in the plate as a symbol of your giving. For those on Zoom, the link to our donate page is in the chat room. I offer many thanks for each and every one of your gifts of time, money, energy, and spirit. is in your order of service. Just one note, and that is that our communion hymn will be sung the entire time people are coming forward to receive communion. It's just one verse, and so you can join in whenever you'd like. The words are on the back of your, or sorry, the words are in your hymnal, and they will also be on the screen. Loving and merciful God, you welcome us all to your table. Just as Jesus sat and ate with the poor and outcast, so we are called to open our hearts and minds and church to everyone. Forgiving and transforming God, we are grateful for this communion table and the bread and cup symbols of your love and blessing that sit upon it. Help us to follow the way of Jesus, who broke bread with all people and showed us that the realm of God is right here among us for everyone who seeks it. This morning we give thanks for Sabbath and Shalom. Help us remember who we're called to be. as ourselves, do justice and show mercy, share the good news of Jesus, and listen to our still-speaking God. God is with us. In God we live and move and have our being. By God we are loved, accepted, and transformed. Amen. 
On the night that Jesus ate his last meal, he took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, asking that whenever they eat of it, they do so in remembrance of him. Bread, you too are broken. Sharing it, we are all made whole. On that same night, Jesus took the cup of wine, blessed it, and shared it with his disciples, asking that every time they drink of it, they do so in remembrance of him. And so remembering Jesus, we ask God to bless these gifts of bread and wine. May all who partake of them be filled with the Spirit, and may they be signs of life and peace for the whole world. This is God's table, and everyone is welcome. Please join me for the prayer of thanksgiving. We thank you, God, for bringing us together and welcoming us at your table. We are grateful to have been reminded once again that our purpose is to love and be loved. We know that you call every one of us to serve you, and we thank you for helping us to live out this service 
by loving one another as we have been loved by you. May we share the welcome we have experienced here today, everywhere we go and with everyone we meet. And may we be forever blessed by your creating strength, redeeming grace, and sustaining peace. Amen. Please rise as you are able in body and or spirit for our closing hymn, commission, and sung benediction. This morning as we go forth, I would like to carry with you both and, both Shabbat and the great Shalom, both justice and compassion, both taking action and taking care.